Hey Facebook, hello YouTube, how you guys doing? Hoping you're doing great today. Um, here I am following my blog from two weeks ago. Uh, so I'm going to start with what we end up last uh, two weeks ago, which it was the Voces de la Frontera rally. Um, a lot of people, well not a lot, two people have called me and they're complaining and they're Voces groupies, so I understand that part, uh, whatever. Uh, they're upset because, um, I like I said, I made up a, a video talking about why it wouldn't be a good idea for us to march on May 1st and May 2nd. Uh, they had a two-day without immigrant march. Why not? Uh, well, first of all, these guys decided to start the march on May 1st, which we followed on Sunday, to an office of Ron Johnson. If you guys know Ron Johnson, he's a state senator. Uh, and, well, basically, state senators work from Monday to Friday. Uh, so the office, office, obviously, and the whole building was closed on Sunday when they showed up with their march. Uh, so that was ironic. Not, and needless to say, that was not only the ironic part of it. They invited uh, our mayor, a new mayor, Cavalier Jansen. Uh, this guy, if you guys not follow much on politics, so when uh, we had a redistricting, where we were going to be able to actually add a Latino Hispanic seat and have more voice for us Latino. And he stopped that. He vetoed that um, in any event. So he did that. And thanks to that, we lost, you know, some voices and, and, and a chance to be stronger as Latino community. But yeah, nevertheless, Voces de la Frontera invited him to speak about I don't know what the hell he said because he talked about he never talked about Latinos there, nor he said that he had any plan to help us or any type of immigrants here. He used to talk about unifying very openly without no idea or no plans whatsoever. So it was really ironic as well to see a guy that doesn't like Latinos or doesn't really help Latinos being in there and being highlighted that day right that that should have been jorge and jose and lupita the ones that work every freaking day and they pay fucking doses to bosses you know things like that then they, they should be the ones doing that it should have been the ones being called out and and you know saying thanks to them for showing up in any event um yeah couple of people only two that i know they were upset at me putting that video and they can go fuck off i am a friend of them already i don't care uh, I'm going to say what I need to say, and I'm going to speak for my community, whether they like it or not. Uh, it's funny how when I say stuff that they like, they're we all friends. But when I say something that's against them, all of a sudden I'm trying to divide the community, and I don't like the community. Because they are so full of their shit that they believe the community is there. <laughs> LOL, that's funny, right? But anyways, so that was that, and yeah. It's a waste of time for myself, at least, to think that they're, they're going to make any changes. But I'm here to talk about also the increase of violence that we are experiencing in all of our communities here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, all over Wisconsin, Madison, Milwaukee, Racine. I mean, it's getting crazy. Uh, and nobody's doing anything about it. That's the reality of it. And everybody can talk a great game. Oh, we care. We need more police. It's that. It's this. And I'm here to guys to let you know. First of all, they, uh, that day, Saturday, when they shot 17 people in downtown Milwaukee in the Deer District. And I believe one of, that's one of the reasons why the Bucks didn't go all the way to the playoff. They were afraid that there was more shit going to pop up here. Um, in any event, that day, 21 people, 17 people got shot in downtown. And... Three, four more got shot the same night. So 21 people got shot that night, that night alone. Uh, and unfortunately, have you heard any organizations jump up? Where are the guys that used to march for like 200 days or whatnot? I've been in this shit for over 12 years, first of all. So 200 days to me is funny. 300 days is funny. All right. But in any event, where are they? Where, where is everybody else? And I'm going to tell you, I have reached out to some of those organizations and they told me straight up, the longest is not cap related or police related, they are not going to get in it. And I asked myself, why? Why will you not get in on some shit that is affecting your community? Why will you not do something that is 
clearly gonna affect your community, your kids, your family. Why? Why would I get involved? I mean, why are you so afraid of getting involved and telling people to do the right thing? And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Um, obviously, they cleanse out the playoff watch. They lost the playoffs now, of course. Uh, but yeah. So here we are walking around, acting like we are big, tough. And we see all this violence, right? And yeah, we always blame the cops and say that's the reason why all this violence is going on. But being honest, guys, it starts in our house, in our household. That's what, where this starts and this is where, where everything should be going, at being addressed. Uh, and I'm not playing, all right? So, I mean, I'm a parent. And if I see my kid coming in with fucking brand new Jordans, brand new shoes, brand new jeans, shirts that I didn't buy myself for him, his mom, his grandma didn't buy for him. Obviously, he's doing something that he's not supposed to. He don't have a job. What is he getting this money from? And it's your job as a parent to ask him that. You see him driving a car or his friends picking him up in different cars all the time. And you know his friends don't have money like that. Then maybe the cars are stolen. Maybe you need to start digging into that. You smell fucking weed in the your son's, your daughter's room. Maybe she's dealing, maybe she's smoking. You need to start checking on that. I'm not saying that everything is terrible, but you, you as a parent, you need to start getting involved. And that's our issue. That's our problem. And that's where everything lies, guys. We are not holding ourselves accountable. We is we are living a, in a new era where it's so easy to blame everybody else for our mistakes and misfortunes. Everyone. It's easy to blame anybody else for what happens to us, but we never want to take accountability, which is not good. We should. I seen old people, 40, 50, my age, older than me, walking around, game banging still, guys. Believe it or not, game banging, throwing gang signs, telling their kids how cool it is, how they don't shouldn't fuck with these flakes and all this stuff. Like, what the hell, guys? How, how you haven't grown out of that shit? Are you not that about a better life for your kids and your family? I don't understand that. that. That's exactly where things start. You cannot allow your kids to run wild and expect nothing to happen to them. You cannot allow your ex-husband, your cousin to come by the house and he's fucking talking about gangs drugs and all this dumb stuff at your house in front of your kids be responsible get up in the morning feed them breakfast make sure they go to school follow up that's what we're lacking here in wisconsin that's what we're lacking here in usa and most of the world to be honest People are so bullshitters. I mean, so so easy to say to everyone, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a single parent. I'm a poor Mexican guy and I have to work and I don't got time for my kids. Motherfuckers, I, I have news for you. My mom, your dad, probably your mom, your grandma did the same thing we do. Harder because it was harder for them. Sometimes they didn't even have transportation. And in other countries like Mexico, they had to walk for kilometers just to get to where they need to be and they will come back from there after a hard day of work walk in the sun come back with a smile on their face they will still fucking cook they will still wash your clothes they will still take care of you they will still check your fucking homework what's happening with us why are we not taking responsibility accountability of ourselves i'm not saying the cops are fucking great I'm not saying that the cops are right, because they're not. They, they have killed plenty of innocent people. But being honest, guys, that's not all of our problems. A lot of our problems rely in between us here, in our communities, killing each other, don't liking each other, not working with each other. That's what our problem is, and nobody want to do shit about it. Where is all these activists? As soon as there's a camera, you'll see them all there pointing their fingers. Here, there, we have to do that. We're going to come back. Bullshit. Bullshit. 
you guys have not done anything. Three of us have done something here. And we'll continue to do it because we're not scared. Well, some of you guys just want to take the credit and the money that it comes with it. We're here to really do the work, roll up our sleeves and get on it, talk to people. And that's what we need to do. We need to start getting involved. If you're in a neighborhood and you see your cousin, you see your brother doing some stupid shit like that, and you ain't saying shit, you are part of the problem. And you're not telling them to stop. You are part of the problem. And you see some dumb kids that you know in your neighborhood and they don't know how to act. And you cannot even, as a grown man, you cannot bring them under your freaking wing, under your shoulder and teach them the fucking right way. Then you are part of the problem as well. You ain't doing shit to change it. Don't complain afterwards. I don't want to hear it. Don't complain afterwards. That's the thing. That's what it is. Everybody's asking for money. We need to do this. We need to do that. No, guys, it's real simple. We need to start holding people accountable. And we need mental health. Yes, we do that. We need that. But we need to be sincere, too, about it. And like I say, you're a parent and you see your fucking kid. You walk around your kid's freaking room and you smell weed or you smell some type of crazy shit in there. Go check what it is. See what he's doing. You see many people calling your kid and he's a young guy. He's getting a whole bunch of calls. Maybe, maybe he's selling something. Check it. Check his phone. And you see, you know, check his room once in a while. And you see your kid carrying a gun and you never bought him a gun and you know he don't have it legally. Check where he got it from before it's too late. You see him pull up with a car that you know you didn't fucking buy him. You know he didn't have money. He didn't work. Check that. Tell him to stop. Be smart. Tell them about your shit. Tell them about what happened to your life. You see, me, myself here, I've been through a whole bunch of shit in my life. I have done many things that I'm not proud of. And I'm being honest, guys. I don't have to fucking pretend that I'm perfect because I'm not. I'm past perfect. But once again, I'm not perfect, but here I am doing stuff for the community to try to help them. And one thing that you can do, too, is tell them about your experiences. Tell them about what happened to you when you did something dumb and stupid. Tell these young people what's going on in life. Teach them the right fucking thing. Tell them the truth. Don't lie. Don't make it glorify as a fucking, you know, like a, like a fucking gang member is, is something to be proud of because you're not. Being a drug dealer is something you'll be proud of because you are not. You shouldn't be proud of that. Help your mom, help your dad, help clean up the house, be productive with the society. Sooner or later, you will see how freaking good it feels when you help someone else. It really does. But we need to start getting in it. We need to start holding ourselves accountable. We need to start pushing, and we definitely need to stick together. So... I'll be back Friday for sure this time. Friday. Uh, I'll be at 6 p.m. Friday. Now, every Friday, I'll be definitely blogging at 6 p.m. So please tune in 6 p.m. this Friday for our continuation of our talks. I hope, you know, you guys can definitely, when you are watching, you can, you know, involve yourself. Tell me what would you think will work, what you think we should do. Like I say, I, I don't believe you adding cops, adding police officers in the streets are going to help. Police is reactive, right? You call the police after something happened, right? So they're reactive. We need something proactive, something that is going to help us before things happen. And whatever is can help us is us, us as a, commu as a community, adopting these, these places and taking care of our kids and taking care of others' kids, teach them the right way, tell them the truth, tell them about our experiences, what happens to us, and why they shouldn't do the stupid thing we did before. So, and to Friday, hope you guys stay safe. Don't get shot. No, but seriously, stay safe, guys. We're living in a crazy war when we don't know when, you know, we're going to be gone or when things are going to happen to any of us or our families. So please stay, stay safe. I hope to see you guys soon. And peace and love.